Assalamu alaikum and hi. So our company is called Allsat and this is the members of our group. So our product is called the Pick Upper. The picture is just a small scale representative robot to what the real prototype should be. So basically, the Pick Upper is an autonomous machine that can carry objects from one place to another. How are we going to work on this idea is further explained in the business model canvas and also the value proposition canvas. Hi, my name is Mama Izudin bin Mama Asri. Today I will be talking about customer segment, value proposition and channel. Firstly, for the customer segment, we are focusing for the company that always need to transport or move the large cargo from one place to another place. Next, for the value proposition means that what value do we deliver to the customer? Okay, for the value that we deliver to the customer are autonomous, ergonomic, time and cost saving, last but not least, customizable. Lastly is channel. For the channel, we have four channels from our company. First is online, like WhatsApp or email. Second is website. They also can explore to our website. And third is partnership. And lastly is dealership. My name is Muhammad Faiz Daniel, and I will be talking about the customer relationships, revenue streams, and the key resources for our product, which is the pick upper. Before we begin, we need to identify the definition for all the blocks. For the first one, the customer relationships is to describe the ways that a company will engage with its customers to improve the customer experience. So to identify what is our customer relationships, we need to ask how do we get, keep and grow customers? Secondly, which customer relationships have we established? Next, how are they integrated with the rest of our business model? And finally, how costly are they? So for our, so for our product, customer relationships are customer service call center for inquiry and maintenance. Next will be feedback from the customers and lastly promotional offer so the next one is revenue streams revenue streams are sources of revenue of a company so the questions that need to be asked to, to construct the block which are for what value are our customers really willing to pay next for what do they currently pay and the third one what is the revenue model and lastly what are the pricing tactics? So for our device, which is the pick upper, the revenue streams are machine rental, trial period, stock supply, sales, and lastly, leasing fees. And the last block for my part, which is the key resources, the definition is to describe the most important assets needed to make a business model work. In order to create the block, we need to ask what key resources do our value proportions require. Next will be our, our distribution channels and customer relationships and lastly, revenue streams. So for our product, which is the pick upper, the key resources are long term contract with key clients. Next will be branding and finally, hiring talented maintenance staffs. And thank you very much. Hi, my name is Ayman Hamzi and I will be explaining about the last three blocks. First one is the key activities. Basically, key activities is what activity does the value proposition require. For our business, our key activities is distribution or delivering of the machine. This is to ensure that the machine arrives at the buyer's place without any difficulties. Next is the regular maintenance or restocking, which is important as to ensure the machine is working for a long time. And lastly, marketing and advertising is as equally important as the other two to ensure the continuity of the company. Next, I will be explaining about key partnerships. 
which are basically relationships that we have with other business, governmental or non-consumer entities that help the business model to work. As you can see, the key partners for our business model is investors, which to help to build the company from scratch, clients, which to help grow the company by buying the machine, governments and also other corporation to help with the supply of parts to build the machine. The last block for a business model canvas is the cost structure. Cost structure means the cost necessary to build the business model. In our case, the biggest cost would be to manufacture the machine and also to do the maintenance of the machine. Software development is also a bit costly as it is the brain of the machine. Other costs are just marketing costs and labor costs to deliver and build the machine. So that is all for the business model canvas. Now for the product side of the value proposition canvas. Starting with features of our product, its primary function is to pick up heavy objects and move them from one place to another. Next, we have the benefits of the product. First, it is autonomous meaning it can conduct its specified movements without constant supervision from humans. Second, it is ergonomic making it very efficient. Finally, it is customizable. Depending on the product set requirements from a client, the robot can be changed accordingly. On that note, it is also both time and cost efficient for client use. Last but not least, experience the user has with our product. It gets the job done much faster than human work, therefore it is also more efficient. Due to this, human resources can be allocated to more suitable work especially in some that need human intervention. Now, moving on for the value propositions for customers. Uh, firstly, we have the customer's wants, which are the emotional drivers for purchasing the product. The first thing that the customer looks for is a product that eases their workload and makes life easier for them. Essentially, customers make purchases to improve the quality and quantity of work. Therefore, it is vital that the product that our company is selling can help achieve this. Secondly, the customers would want high-end battery tech or battery technology on the autonomous pickupper. This is to ensure that the machine is capable of running for a long time and does not require frequent charges or battery changes. Thirdly, customers would want designs that are futuristic and appealing to the eye. This is because no one wants to buy a product that they find to be ugly. Therefore, a futuristic and good design would attract a lot of potential buyers. Fourthly, customers would want brand recognition. This is because customers would feel much safer and confident to buy from well-known brands compared to unknown or relatively new brands. And finally, customers would want a high safety rating. The reason for this is because our product is autonomous, hence it is crucial that it has a high safety rating as human control over it would be limited. As for the customer's needs, which are the rational drivers for purchasing the product, firstly is the product must be different from others. There would be no reason to purchase a machine that the customers could find somewhere else. This would decrease the likelihood of our product to attract buyers, therefore uniqueness is important. Secondly, the product must be long-lasting. A long-lasting product can save the customers a lot of time and money as they don't have to replace or repair the machines frequently. Thirdly, the product must be long-term cost-effective. Even though a product might have an expensive price tag, if the product can outlast other cheaper alternatives, then the price tag would be justified. Finally, the customers would need a machine that can operate continuously without supervision. As one of the main attractions for our product is the fact that it's autonomous, hence this would be one of the most key elements that potential customers would look into. Moving on to the fears, which are the risks that customers would consider before switching to our product. Firstly is the fear of malfunction. Since our product is autonomous, human control over it would be limited, hence increasing the likelihood of malfunction to be considered by the customers before buying our product. Secondly is the fear of dead batteries. As the machine is autonomous, it would require batteries as a power source. 
Therefore, the customers would fear that they will have to constantly be monitoring the machine to ensure that the batteries are not dead as it would disrupt the whole process of their work. And finally is the fear of accidents and or harm. Since human control over the machine is limited, as mentioned before, this would decrease the capability of the users to take control of the machine in case of emergencies or if the machine starts to malfunction. As for the substitutes for our product, currently many of the cargo companies are using human operated vehicles instead of autonomous vehicles. That's all from us. Thank you.